To make an idle animation where the ears flinch by themselves every couple of seconds, we need two new toggles, ear trigger left and ear trigger right. Then go in physics settings, and we previously rigged the ear flinching to eye open right and eye open left. So now we just need to change those inputs to the triggers. We have three physics groups on each ear. On the ear left ones, change the input to ear trigger left. On the ear right ones, change the input to ear trigger right. When you're done, wiggle the triggers to see if it works. And now we'll make an animation file. So go to File, New, Animation, SDK Unity, OK. And on top left, drag the model file into the timeline. Ah, uh, that's a bit inappropriate. Let me scale him down. And if you click on the scene in the inspector, you'll be able to change the size of the canvas. And the size only matters if you're like exporting it as a video. But if you're exporting it as a model, I don't think it matters. So expand the model over here, and you can set the keyframes for your parameters. So I'm going to set the ear trigger left first. I'm going to roughly estimate where I put my keyframes to simulate the wiggling. Okay, now to see if it actually works, go in animation, track, bake animation from physics. Just click OK. And the ears are wiggling. And of course, continue to make more adjustments. Each time, go back to bake the physics. And do the same for the right trigger. So this method applies to other animations like waving, tears, sleeping animation when lost track. A thing to add is that you cannot keyframe physics parameters. So if this parameter is inside of output settings in physics, it will not export into your final animation file. And that's why we had to make the two ear trigger parameters. And I'm extending the duration here. Save your file with where your CMO file is when you're done. And I'll teach you how to export this later too. So if you want to test your animations in your physics settings, you'll need to have both files open. Going to playlist, click add. I'm not going to name it. And then select the scene on the left and click add. Then it'll appear on the bar on the top. Then click play and I'll start idle animationing. Then for toggles, create a folder called toggles. And for this model, I'm going to do a hair up toggle, minimum zero, maximum one, and a blush toggle. But I don't have the blush, so I'm going to drag in my emotes PSD, click on the model, add all layers as new art mesh. This is what you do to add new layers onto your existing model. I don't have time to do all the other toggles, so I'm just going to drag my blush out and delete everything else. Put the blush into the right folder and write deformers, which I put above the nose layer and in the face XY deformer. And give it a standard auto mesh, and it's moving all right. So then I make the toggle blush, and I'm just attaching my blush layers on it and lowering the opacity to zero at the default. And that's it. And for the hair up, I'm just going to select all the hair that I want gone, make a deformer, attach that to hair up, and swoosh it up, zero opacity, and I'm done. This is also what I do for alternate hairstyles and outfits. Now finally, model export. So click edit texture atlas. This is where the exported model is going to store all the layers. So for width and height, if you're planning to use the model on your iPhone, don't go past 4096, both width and height. It crashes the model. But I'm not, so I chose 8000 something. Click set automatic layout. I like to do specify user 100% because that gives you the best image quality. Click OK, another OK. This is what it generated for me, and there is more layers on the right that didn't fit. So I go into texture, add texture. Actually, I'm going to switch up the height and width because maybe his leg will fit better. So shift select everything on the right, right click, place selected object to texture atlas, click automatic layout on top right. Okay. And the legs are still not in, so I'm just going to manually place them in. 
And for any new layers that you add into this model, you'll have to place them onto the texture atlas afterwards. And so I clicked OK after I'm done. And now go to File, Export for Runtime, Export as CMO3 file. Make sure the top says Cubism 5.0. Click OK. And then you'll open up your folder. I recommend saving it in the VTube Studio model folder. You can find that by going to VTube Studio, import your own model, and open folder. And once you find that path in your export menu, right click, new folder. I call mine poopoo 2.0. And just save your file in here. I've already exported it once, so I'm just going to overwrite it to export again. You're done if you don't have an idle animation, but if you do, go to your animation file, click File, Export for Runtime, Export Motion File. With the settings a bit like this, click OK and save in the same folder that we just created, Poopoo Poo 2.0. You should rename it to idle, but I didn't. And we're all done. Next, we're going to go to VTube Studio and complete the model setup. 